Hey gang, welcome to another worksheet video walkthrough. So for those who may be new to these well, worksheet video walkthroughs, this is an opportunity for you to, maybe you've done with the worksheet, maybe you've looked at the PDF solutions that go along with that worksheet, but maybe you want some more information. Maybe you want to see exactly how I would do the problem, or maybe you just want to make sure that you're doing the problem correctly and that you want, or, or maybe you just want a deeper explanation. I don't know. But I, what I do know is that you're here and you want some answers and some explanation for those answers. So in this video walkthrough, we will be tackling acid-base basics. I can't stress how much acid, you know, nailing down your acid-base fundamentals is to your success in organic chemistry. So I'm glad you're here because I hope that means you're taking this seriously. I'm taking it seriously. Let's do this worksheet. Okay, gang. So in the first problem of this worksheet, we are tasked with, we are given many acid-base equilibria. So again, maybe saying things you might already know, each one of these problems depicts an acid-base situation, right? So you probably have a beaker of these things floating around. And again, it's not like something happens and everything stops, right? It's not static. This is, these are all dynamic situations, meaning things are happening in this direction and this direction, but one direction is dominating. One direction is happening more than the other. So don't think it, you know, you mix these things and then, you know, it just sits and everything's done. No, things are going this way, things are going this way, and we need to figure out which side is winning. Which side does the beaker more look like? Which side is favored at equilibrium? And if you haven't watched the Acid Based Basics video, I'd highly recommend you do that before watching this video, but we learned five different tools to help us figure out, um, sorry, I apologize, uh, you know, base, you know, you know, conjugate base stability and acid base knowledge. So we can, you know, we need to figure out based on those five different rules, which side is more stable in the equilibrium because that is where nature likes to go, stability. Okay, so in this first problem, we see we have H2O and HS minus, and then we have hydroxide and H2S. So remember, in, in this problem up here, what we need to think is, what does nature want? Stability. So really, uh, when you have charged species, right, that's not neutral. That's, you know, some, some straying away from stability. So what we need to ask ourselves in this problem is who handles this negative charge better, this excess charge? Is it the sulfur in HS minus or is it the oxygen in OH minus, right? Now, we need to think about what the relationship between these two atoms are, and it's that they're in the same column, the same family in the periodic table, okay? So as you go down a column, you add energy levels. The atom you're looking at gets bigger as you go down a column. So this particular uh, relationship from the five that we know is size. And because the bigger you are, the more surface area there is for that excess charge to spread itself out and get away from its, you know, other like charges and, you know, minimize repelling. Sulfur handles this better than oxygen. It's a size thing, okay? All right, so this side's favored at equilibrium because sulfur handles the negative charge better. That is better for overall, you know, stability of the reaction environment. That's the answer. This side is favored at equilibrium. Okay. So, next uh, question. And of course, like I have this written down, but in, you know, in any scenario, you'd have a periodic table available to you. So in this scenario, we pretty much have a very similar thing going on, right? We have these binary acids, H blank, right? Uh, H3As and H2P minus, and then over here, H2As minus and H3P. So again, if you had a periodic table, it'd be easy to see that we have these two atoms right here, bearing the negative charge and their relationship to one another is that they're in the same column, okay? So once again, it's a size thing. So the bigger atom handles the negative charge more effectively. That's the more stable side of equilibrium. There we go. And just to inject this terminology in again, remember, I'm saying more stable, but this, here's an acid, here's the acid's conjugate base. That conjugate base is more stable or you could say, this strong, this acid is stronger than this acid, and the resulting conjugate base is more stable, aka weaker than this acid's 
conjugate base. Okay. So now, moving right along, we have hydroxide, ammonia, on this side of the equilibrium going to NH2 minus and our good friend, water. What's the relationship between the two atoms bearing the negative charge, oxygen and nitrogen? They're in the same row. So when you have the same row as opposed to the same column, what you have going on is electronegativity. Remember we talked about that? And the more electronegative atom handles electrons better. That is, I think, something very easy to have sit in your mind. So oxygen handles more excess electrons better than nitrogen. This side of the equilibrium is favored. This acid is stronger than this acid. It does its job. It gives H+. Plus, and this hydroxide is a weaker, more stable conjugate base than NH2 minus. Okay? Moving right along. So now we have some bond line. Look at that. In this situation, right, we have a carbon with a negative charge and a carbon with a negative charge. So what's the rule that we're going to reach for to help us figure out which side is favored at equilibrium? Well, I think one clear difference is a difference in hybridization. This, sorry, dang, I don't know what's going on. This carbon right here is sp3 hybridized. This carbon over here is sp2 hybridized. Remember, the mo so this carbon right here it has 25% S character and it's hybrid orbitals because there are four total, four total orbitals, S being one of them, one over four, 0.25, 25%, right? Over here, on the other hand, we have, so 25% S, this is 33 and a third percent S. I'll just do that. The more S character you have, the more spherical your orbital is, the closer you are to the nucleus, uh, that you know the hybrid orbital hybrid orbital is housing the electrons here so with the more s character the more spherical you are the closer you are to the nucleus where the protons live and that positive negative electrostatic interaction is sta a stabilizing effect so since we have more s character on this side of the equilibrium this conjugate base is more you know it's more stable weaker than this conjugate base so we favor the right hand side Moving right along, if we look at this right here, something I did not mention in the videos, but maybe you remember from Gen Chem, is when you have an oxy acid, oxy acid meaning H and then something with oxygen in it right here. So like this right here. The rule is strong is when you have two or more oxygens than hydrogens. So we are, that is not the case here. So this is a weak acid. Just wanted to put that out there. So really, we're looking at this right here. So if we have a weak acid right here and we force it to do something that's not great at, our con resulting conjugate base is strong, not weak, right? If something is strong, it's reactive. It's gonna do something. So really, we're looking at this right here. Since this is a weak acid and its resulting conjugate base is reactive and strong. On the other hand, we have HBr. We know HBr to be a stock strong acid. Super good, dissociates 100% of the time. So super strong acid, this is a weak, stable conjugate base. Br- is way better at handling, handling this negative charge than this NO2- ion. This side of the equilibrium is favored, okay? So now down here, that same oxy acid rule comes into play. And we just know sulfuric acid to be a very strong acid, but you can see we have four oxygens, two hydrogens. The two or more oxygen rule shows us that this is a strong acid right here. And its resulting conjugate base, super weak, super stable. It's actually stabilized by resonance, and we will see that in the next problem when we draw it. This side of the equilibrium is favored. Water and hydronium and got nothing on sulfuric acid. Okay, gang, so I hope all of these equilibrium decisions made sense to you. I hope the five rules are settling in, but let's keep pushing on because we have more of this worksheet to do. Okay, gang, problem two. So in this problem, we are given the conjugate bases of both phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid, and we are asked to do two things. One, draw the resonance here, and then after drawing the resonance, we need to use the work we just did, the resonance work, as well as you know the rest of our acid-based knowledge to justify the statement that sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than phosphoric acid. 
Okay, so let's handle the top structure first and draw its resonance. So I just went ahead and got the Lewis structures drawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my first double-headed arrow to say, hey, look at me, I'm drawing resonance. So the first thing I'm going to do is swing these electrons down, and then I'm going to, you know, I again, we know sulfur has an expanded octet in this scenario. I'll fill in these lone pairs. But I need to kick up a double bond as a lone pair on one of the oxygens. I have two chances. I'm going to need them both. So I will go ahead and do that. So I'm going to draw the oxygen here. A double bond, sulfur, single bond down here, double bond up there still, over here. Okay. And because this oxygen now has three lone pairs, I have a negative charge on that bottom oxygen. There we go. So the next thing I can go ahead and do, swing these electrons, or I'll go ahead and draw my double-headed arrows and say, hey, look at me, I'm drawing resonance. I will swing these down, form a double bond, and then I will go ahead and get these up right here. So I have oxygen, double bond, sulfur, negative charge up there. Didn't touch anything over here. Double bond down there. Okay, and wouldn't you know it, but that is the resonance we can draw. So now let's draw the resonance for phosphoric acid. So if you can look at our situation, we have less double bonds available in sulfuric acid. So the first thing I'm going to do is swing these electrons down, and then I'll have to kick these up right here. Yeah, no, I didn't draw my double-headed arrow first, but I'm not perfect. Okay, so if I draw the result of my arrows, I have the phosphorus, I didn't touch the OH on the right, didn't touch the OH up top. I now have a double bond over here, and I now have a single bond down there. And you can see that the negative charge is just moving down here. So what I like about this is it not only explains, we're going to use our knowledge of resonance as far as acid-based stability, but it also explains that oxy-acid rule I mentioned in the first part in problem one. You can see I've drawn all the resonance for phosphoric acid. You can see I've drawn all the resonance for sulfuric acid. There's more resonance in the case of the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. Remember, resonance distributes electrons over a network of atoms. That means an atom doesn't have to bear the burden of excess negative charge, which is a destabilizing situation. So, because there's more resonance in the conjugate base of sulfuric acid versus the conjugate base of phosphoric acid, we can clearly say that more resonance equals more stable, and in acid baseland, remember, stable equals weak. And I'm gonna move, here, I'll move over here, okay? So, really what this is telling us is that HSO4 minus, I'm gonna say greater than H2PO4 minus. This, the conjugate base, right, of sulfuric acid is more stable, more weaker than H2PO4. So if we take that back to acid land, right, which means H2SO4, because this is a weaker conjugate base, that means it came from a stronger acid. So we can say H2SO4 is stronger as an acid than H3PO4. And to really bring it home and explain the oxy acid rule, you can see the more oxygens you have and the fewer hydrogens you have, that means you have more double bonds in your structure. The, because every time you have an H, that means it's an OH as opposed to a double bonded O. And we can see that the more double bonds, you know, the more double bonded oxygens you have in there, the more resonance you can draw. Okay, so that does it for problem two. So let's finish it out with problem three. Okay, gang, problem three, acid-based basics, Lego. So in this problem, what we are tasked with doing is identifying in each situation, A, B, C, and D, the more acidic proton. Now again, to inject more of this terminology, because you can basically say the same thing in acid-based land a bunch of different ways. If we're looking for the more acidic proton, which is you know written in red, that means we're really, we can look at each situation and if we can identify, if we can look at you know, either this or this and then you know, see what its conjugate base is and make a determination as to which conjugate base is weaker, more stable, we can then say it's that conjugate base is acid that's stronger, okay? 
So in this scenario, up top in A, we see a very clear difference. And from the acid-based basics video, you probably already know what it is. I'm basically delaying the inevitable. You're sitting at the computer, say, shaking it, saying, Joe, it's the inductive effect. And you're absolutely right. In each scenario, right, if I were to just roughly draw this, we would have this, and we would have this. So remember, we have a negative oxygen in both scenarios. The charge, the atom bearing the charge doesn't change, but what does change is the fact that we have two fluorines here, not just sucking electron density out of this carbon, but also sucking electron density out of that carbon, which means the carbon next door to the oxygen bearing a negative charge is a little bit more positive in this situation. So this situation is more stable, AKA weaker, so it's this acid that is stronger because its conjugate base is weaker, more stable, okay? So now, we look at B. I'm gonna erase this just to clean some, clean some things up. Okay, so I think it's very obvious what's going on here. It's a hybridization, and I'll, I'll write inductive up here. But in B, it's a hybridization thing, right? We have SP versus SP2, and we know the whole explanation, more SP character means Electrons in a hybrid orbital are closer to the nucleus where the protons live, and that's more stabilizing because of electrostatic effect. So it's this structure right here. It's the alkyne, right, triple bond, that has more S character, 50% versus 33 and a third. So it's this, this acid gives rise to a weaker, more stable conjugate base. Therefore, this is the stronger acid as opposed to this acid, okay? Now, if we look at C, hopefully you're thinking to yourself, okay, two or more oxygens than hydrogens. This means really that there's resonance available for this oxy acid, right? Resonance being a very stabilizing effect. That's good, this is a strong acid, but not only that, but it's up against the weak, the weak, 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 hydrofluoric acid, right? It's the only halogen binary acid that isn't strong, right? HI, strong, HBr, strong, HCl, strong. HF, that's a no-go, this is weak, this is strong, we didn't even need to do, we didn't even need to know about resonance here to pick this as the stronger acid. But because we're smart, we did flex on everyone else by realizing resonance is available because we have more oxygens and hydrogens. That means there's more double bonded O's in this structure. So the conjugate base would have oodles of resonance to take advantage of and be stable as a result. Okay, now if we look at D. So I like this because it's a little bit more what you'd maybe see in real life, right? These are some organic acids, right? There's some bond line involved. It's not just, you know, water versus NH3. So I hope that you're thinking the conjugate bases look like this. O minus and NH minus. We only lose one hydrogen, right? We have one lone pair right here that I didn't draw, okay? There's three right here. But probably even belaboring the point it's, electron, it's an electronegativity thing because oxygen and nitrogen are in the same row of the periodic, oh, drew that backwards, same row of the periodic table. Oxygen's more electronegative. It can handle the resulting negative charge better as a conjugate base. That means its corresponding acid is stronger. Okay, excellent. Gang, I hope you've really, you're sitting at your computer thinking, I'm really sure of my acid-based basics. I'm, I'm for real telling you, they never go away. I've worked with a lot of students, and I'll tell you what, it really prevents you from learning the newer things further on in organic chemistry one and two, if you're getting tripped up over tiny acid-based concepts, because quite literally, it's, it never goes away. It's embedded in every single concept, essentially, that you're going to learn from now until the time you finish your organic career. But thank you again, if you're watching this video, that means You've thrown me a little bit of money, so I thank you for supporting Joe Chem. I hope it's helpful. I hope this gave you a little bit more information about the worksheet and you've gotten value out of it. I thank you for taking me along in your organic ride. I hope to be there from now until the very end, and I hope to see you all in the next video.